from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Good day and welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. My name is Monsignor Sam Bianco. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from an anonymous donor from Scarborough, Ontario. This Mass is offered in loving memory of Tyrone Wong, who passed away on April the 3rd, 2018, and for all the holy souls. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today is the feast of St. Justin Martyr. To celebrate this feast in a proper and appropriate manner, we begin by asking the Lord to be merciful to us in our sins and weaknesses. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who through the folly of the cross wondrously taught St. Justin Martyr the surpassing knowledge of Jesus Christ, grant us through his intercession that having rejected deception and error, we may become steadfast in the faith. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Tobit. At night, I, Tobit, tired from burying the dead, washed myself and went into the courtyard and slept by the wall of the courtyard, and my face was uncovered because of the heat. I did not know that there were sparrows on the wall. Their fresh droppings fell into my eyes and produced white films. I went to physicians to be healed, but the more they treated me with ointments, the more my vision was obscured by the white films until I became completely blind. At that time also, my wife Anna earned money as a weaver she used to send what she made to the owners, and they would pay wages to her. One day, the seventh of Dystrus, when she cut off a piece that she had woven and sent it to the owners, they paid her full wages and also gave her a young goat for a meal. When she returned to me, the goat began to bleat. So I called her and said, Where did you get this goat? It is surely not stolen, is it? Return it to the owners, for we have no right to eat anything stolen. But she said to me, It was given to me as a gift in addition to my wages. But I did not believe her, and told her to return it to the owners. I became flushed with anger against her over this. Then she replied to me, Where are your acts of charity? Where are your righteous deeds? These things are known about you. Then with much grief and anguish of heart, I wept, and with groaning began to pray. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The heart of the just are secure, trusting in the Lord. Happy are those who fear the Lord, 
who greatly delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. The hearts of the just are secure, trusting in the Lord. They are not afraid of evil tidings. Their hearts are firm, secure in the Lord. Their hearts are steady, they will not be afraid. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. The hearts of the just are secure, trusting in the Lord. They have distributed freely have given to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their name is exalted in honor. The hearts of the just are secure, trusting in the The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord. Some Pharisees and some Herodians were sent to Jesus to trap him in what he said. And they came and said to him, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with truth. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? Should we pay them or should we not? But knowing their hypocrisy, Jesus said to them, why are you putting me to the test? Bring me a denarius and let me see it. And they brought him one. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Jesus said to them, Give to the emperor the things that are the emperor's and to God the things that are God's. And they were utterly amazed at him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Bring me a denarius. Let me see it. 
And as soon as one of them pulled an anarius out of the fold of his cloak and showed it to Jesus, the game was over, because on the denarius would have been the head of Tiberius, the Caesar at the time, also known in Roman mythology as a god. And the very people who were challenging Jesus were using that denarius with the face of a god on it to do their economics and to pay their taxes. And of course, in strict Jewish orthodoxy, to recognize any other god but God and to use that coin would in fact be to so compromise yourself and the integrity of your religion that you would have destroyed some of its strength and beauty. Because the other alternative would have been to be a zealot, to say, no, we're not going to use any of these Roman coins. We're going to go back to the days of Mattathias, and we're going to be the zealots because these Romans are unjust, they're cruel, they're calling their leader a god, and there's only one god, and the only way to stop this is by doing what we've done in the past to revolt and to bring down as best we can the Roman emperor. And of course, they thought they'd caught Jesus in a trap, and he turned the question right back on them and caught their true character, their true ambiguity. What they were trying to do is to catch him and they themselves, either in calling for violence against the Romans, which would have let the Romans wipe them out, or using the coinage of the Romans, they themselves were hypocrites. And so Jesus proposed to them a very different approach. He said, there's a third way for you and I to live and to be in this world. A third way to at one and the same time oppose Caesar, but not at the same time to surrender to violence and destruction and to destroy people. And that third way is something that's been going on throughout all his discussion and all the gospel of St. Mark with all his opponents, Herodians and Pharisees and anyone. And the third way that Jesus is proposing is the way of the Beatitudes, uh, the way that truly belongs to God the Father himself. That is to oppose Caesar, not with the tools of violence, not with the tools of rebellion, to really oppose him but to use the tools of the Beatitudes. Well, Jesus did use those tools, didn't he? And we know where it got him. He ended up being crucified because he opposed the dominance of Caesar, and he called for the, the prominence that God alone was to be adored, and put him up on a cross and crucified him. Today's saint, Justin Martyr, something of the same thing happened to him. Before he was martyred, Justin Martyr says, you don't give up piety for impiety, meaning to say, just because there's power that says you must adore a false god, no, you don't use your religious instincts to do it. And if they're forcing me to do that, I'd rather die than not worship God and God alone. Now, there are, as we know, and there have been in history, and many of you watching in this mass, some maybe even experience this, brutal political and economic systems where almost there's no alternative except to defer to the power of Caesar, Caesar and their great political power. Um, the Romans, the Herodians, the Pharisees, uh, Simon the Zealot, they all understood that, and, and they understood that if they opposed the Romans, they would be quashed down, and yet any kind of rebellion wouldn't work in any sort of way. So if you will, they compromised. They compromised, not in a good way of tolerance, 
but with the evil that was around them. The reality is that good deeds and good matters do not necessarily mean we have to give in and say that unjust political or economic or social systems shouldn't be opposed. That is not at all the spirit of Jesus. If there's injustice in the world, if there are unjust economic uh, uh, policies, then one opposes them, but we oppose them with the Beatitudes. Uh, the very people that Jesus was working against, if you will, he came to save. He loved the Pharisees. He loved the Herodians. He, he loved the Romans, and he came to teach a third, a different way. And what is true? What is the way of Caesar? The way of Caesar is either pacifism and pessimism, we do nothing, or cynicism, violence, and despair. And it's in between those two that Jesus presents himself, not only in the larger political and economic and social issues of our times, but also within our own family situations. Sometimes we're in love with people who are suffering and destroying and hurting themselves. That doesn't mean we forget them or we obliterate them. As much as we can in a ministry of presence, we stay with them and be with them. Jesus asks us to give, not a denarius, but what's in our hearts. And if in their, our hearts there's violence, bitterness, angerness, anger, meanness of spirit, that's what he wants to take. And the coin of his realm is the coin of the Beatitudes. That's why people were amazed. Yes, for many people, it can be extremely costly, but that's the kingdom Jesus came to bring about. Will you join with me, please, and we'll offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For those in the Daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those who are facing significant transitions in their activities, health, relationships, and finances, we pray to the Lord. For all who are suffering from COVID, for those who have died, for the many people who are sacrificing so much to work so hard, uh, to bring relief, to bring help to those who are suffering, and that we not lose our patience, but continue to pray and work hard to make sure that this disease is brought down and doesn't spread, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We take a moment, please, to pray for our own intentions, for the people we love and care for, and for those united with us in prayer, we pray to the Lord. Lord, you have given us the outstanding witness and testimony of Jesus of Justin Martyr. Many of us do not have the depth and courage and faith that they had, but their light, their courage and faith shines back on us. Each day, in small, little ways, we make the sacrifices necessary to bring about your kingdom. We do this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Come, yes, Come, drink hearts. Lord, wash away all my iniquities. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands. To praise the glory of his name for our good and all holy church. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, that we may celebrate worthily these mysteries 
which St. Justin strenuously defended through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for the blood of your blessed martyr Justin poured out like Christ to glorify your name shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim. Lord, you are holy indeed, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, all the clergy and all the people of God. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, St. Justin Martyr, and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed now by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of the peace of Christ. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray, refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of St. Justin Martyr, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your and Almighty spirit. God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor.